how you guys doing it's the first ever daily bread video edition um we get started right away with one of my favorite guys who writes in rob jackson from texas what's up bread you keep boxing talk in perspective i've heard since melina kirkland that james tore ligaments in his right shoulder that needed surgery in any case all the heavy lifting is no good resistance bands are better freddie roach is slipping Virgil Hunter is the next big trainer. Seth Mitchell is good, but overrated. If Witherspoon can keep his poise, he'll beat Mitchell. Um, I don't want to make any excuses for James Kirkland. Uh, I don't know what happened to him and what was wrong with him, but if his shoulder was hurt, his feet was out of position all night, uh, his legs were, his knees weren't bent. Uh, so I just want to say Molina for the great fight. He applied the gun in the room theory, he went to the power instead of running away from it. He touched, he turned, he smothered Kirkland, he frustrated him. And that's just that, you know. Um, I do agree with you about resistance bands. They build the long, lean muscles that fighters need instead of the big, bulky muscles. But, um, you know, that's all I really want to say about that fight. Kirkland needs to redeem himself. Um, as for Freddie Roach, I don't know if he's slipping, but his fighters have been struggling. And, uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao needs to perform in this next fight. Uh, I agree with you about Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter is a great trainer. Uh, he doesn't get the credit that the Roaches and Emmanuel Stored and Robert Garcia get because I don't. he doesn't have the number of elite fighters. But once he gets two or three more top-level elite guys, you know, he, he's, he's right up there with those guys. As for Witherspoon, and uh, and uh, Seth Mitchell, I want to pick Witherspoon. But Witherspoon, I watched the Areola Witherspoon fight the other day, and I'm scared because Areola was hurting Witherspoon with like a pushing right hand early and often right behind his ear because I don't think Witherspoon, he, he slides a right hand just slowly and just bends over like that. I watch. Terry Norris get knocked out like that back in the day when he was on top of his game by Simon Brown. I watched Vladimir Klitschko knock out Calvin Brock with the same shot. And Glenn Johnson knocked out Alan Green with the same exact shot. You know, uh, I would much rather the guy kind of swim with the shot and boom, shoot a hook or go over here and come back with a hook. You know, um, everybody can't, you know, Floyd kind of comes up here and goes up here. But... Chaz just bends, and that scares me because it's a bad place to get hit behind your ear, man. Guys get hit there, and they never recover in the fight. So I think that Seth Mitchell is a much more explosive athlete than Ariola is. I'm not saying he's a better fighter, but he's a more explosive athlete. I would rather get hit by Ariola than Mitchell. So I'm a and, and, and the right hand is Mitchell's best punch. So I'm going to reserve my pick until I hear a little bit more, see a little bit more. And I'm sure if, if Virgil Hunter, if, if I see what Witherspoon is doing wrong, uh, I'm sure Virgil Hunter um, recognizes the flaw also. So I'm going to reserve my pick for that fight. My next question is from Sharif Valentine. He calls me the wise man. Sharif also writes in a lot also. I've been doing my research on Richard Abril. I'm picking him to beat Brandon Rios. Abril has a nasty inside game. Ray Leonard meets Chico Corrales. What do you think? Um, I don't think Abril is a mixture of Ray Leonard and Chico Corrales, but I do think the kid could fight. Um, his, he only has two losses to Bradis Prescott and Hank Lundy, and those losses tell me something. Uh, if he was, they were controversial split decisions, and if he was almost able to stay even with Lundy, then I know that he's a busy fighter because Lundy's a hard guy to outpoint. Um, if he was able to, to hang on the inside with Bradis Prescott, I know he could take a punch. So uh, I'm picking Rios, but I wouldn't be surprised if Rios lost. I think this has fight of the year um, all written all over it. Rios is one of those guys who... It's going to be hard for Rios to have that 10-year untouchable streak the way uh, Chavez or Duran had with that style because, you know, you don't wake up every day feeling like walking through fire. 
Uh, if you remember, Chico Corrales, once he reached the top level, he would be up and down. Uh, look at Marcos Maidana now, Antonio Margarito, Arturo Gatti. It's tough to fight that style and be untouchable for a long time. Even great fighters like Ruben Olivares and Joe Frazier lost fights in their prime because you go up and down with that style. It also scares me that Rio struggles so bad to make 135 pounds. When you struggle that bad to make weight, your, uh, your brain loses fluid around it. Your organs can shut down. When somebody starts going to Rio's body, if he keeps trying to make that weight, it's going to be a problem. But I'm picking him because I watched a Brill fight, and he, he is nasty on the inside. But something that a Brill does that I picked up on, he stands up a little bit straight, and he doesn't defend himself well on the inside. So I think Rios is going to get to him with some uppercuts, and win a decision. I'm not going to say he's going to stop him, but I think he's going to win a decision. Uh, it may even be controversial, but I'm picking Brandon to pull this one out. Uh, I'm going to end this segment, and hopefully you guys write in, and we start doing it, you know, doing this on the video uh, more often. Uh, write in to the bread man. that's D-A-B-R-E-A-D-M-A-N 25 at hotmail.com. Uh, and log on to www.boxingtalk.com. Peace.